It's a straight jacket. Yes. It's a straight jacket. It's a straight jacket. The experts at succession are the war veterans. We know this game. You can't find any support or respect your parents. We are being driven too far. This is nonsense. Touch not the successor. In 2015, the party viewed the departure of Joyce Majuru and her cabal as the end of factionalism. Because there had been two factions in Zanu PF, the Majuru and Mnangagwa faction. An impression was created that everyone was now going to rally behind the president. But immediately after the Congress, Mnangagwa, through his foot soldiers, began doing the very same things that my Mujuru had been doing, but with greater determination and effectiveness. This presentation lays out in great detail how VP Mnangagwa has been systematically working toward a criminal and unconstitutional takeover of power. The Blue Ocean Strategy Document. The Blue Ocean Strategy Document says ZANU PF has three options. Option one, where the party and consequently government must go. Option two, where the president wants the party to go. Option three, the path to self-destruction and oblivion. The Blue Ocean Strategy document is not just about the party, it is about capturing the party and government. It clearly states on page 2 that VP Mnangagwa must reclaim control of the party to guide it along path 1. The Blue Ocean Strategy document explains that the name Blue Ocean is appropriate because the strategies contained therein are not familiar to most and represent a proactive agenda-setting approach. This video presentation shows how VP Mnangagwa, while publicly pledging allegiance to President Robert Mugabe, has deployed his foot soldiers to systematically usurp and undermine the President's authority to further his successionist agenda. This agenda is highly organized and its tentacles stretch across the various structures of the party and key arms of state. This presentation outlines how the recent attempt to remove the National Political Commissar was not a spontaneous expression of popular sentiment by rank-and-file members of the party through an innocent petition, but was actually part of a highly organized and systematic program of action started in 2015 by VP Mnangagwa and his dedicated foot soldiers to take control of the party and government. One. This presentation shows that VP Mnangagwa is working to systematically undermine President Robert Mugabe by capturing party structures and key state institutions. Numerous examples will be given, including VP Mnangagwa's brazen attempt to retire the late Chief Justice Godfrey Chichigausiku. Two. This presentation will show that the demonstrations against the National Political Commissar were premeditated and engineered by expelled party members aligned to VP Mnangagwa. The presentation identifies the expelled members, some of whom are aligned to expelled renegades like Godwin Gomwe. The presentation will also show these expelled members being wined and dined at VP Mnangagwa's rural mansion built by the Chinese diamond company Anjin. While VP Mnangagwa publicly denounces these renegades during the day, evidence is now available that he dines with them by night. This presentation will show that this clandestine approach by VP Mnangagwa is consistent with the tactics outlined in a successionist strategy document crafted by Mnangagwa's team called Blue Ocean. Three. 
This presentation reveals recordings of journalists from Zim Papers stating that they are working to further VP Mnangagwa's succession agenda and that they work closely with General Chuenga. Photographic evidence is provided to corroborate this recording. Uh, what is the real target? Four. This presentation reveals internal documents showing that the Ministry of Justice under VP Mnangagwa is using the National Prosecuting Authority for successionist objectives requiring the NPA to disclose information on high-profile cases. These documents were signed at the highest level of the National Prosecuting Authority. Five. This presentation provides full details of an interview given by VP Mnangagwa to a British magazine newspaper, The New Statesman, that led to the publication of an article titled The Last Days of Robert Mugabe. This article provides important information that links VP Mnangagwa, Christopher Mutrangwa, and the Lacoste team, as VP Mnangagwa's foot soldiers have come to be known, to the successionist Blue Ocean Strategy document. Six, this presentation provides full details on the nine-page Blue Ocean Strategy document and evidence that this document was indeed formulated and authored by VP Mnangagwa's foot soldiers. The presentation also highlights the various plans detailed in the document that have since come to pass. VP Mnangagwa's allies have in the past denied authoring the document, but incontrovertible evidence is now available to show beyond reasonable doubt that the Blue Ocean is a VP Mnangagwa document. 7. This presentation shows that the rogue party members who attack President Mugabe and First Lady Dr. Grace Mugabe are in fact working with and for VP Mnangagwa as his foot soldiers. It will demonstrate that VP Mnangagwa's public denunciations of individuals like Energy Mutodi, Christopher Mutrangwa, Victor Matema Danda, Douglas Mahia, and Godfrey Senengamo are merely a ruse to deceive the party and the public. The presentation provides evidence that Mutrangwa and Mnangagwa continue to work hand in hand under the cover of darkness. Eight. The presentation provides incontrovertible evidence that VP Mnangagwa has amassed a significant horde of co-conspirators that are working from their various party and government positions to advance his bid to unconstitutionally and criminally succeed President Robert Mugabe. The people working with VP Mnangagwa are many. They are determined, they are well resourced and they are well organized. This presentation exposes this successionist network in full detail. VP Mnangagwa has a vast network of at least 482 foot soldiers that are actively working to advance his successionist cause in every one of the 10 provinces. Harare province has at least 16 members, including Douglas Mahia, Bernard Pquiro, and others. Mashingo province has at least 157 members, including Love Moma Tuke, Yulita Charamba, and many others. Manikaland province has at least 18 members, including Winmom Lambo, Joshua Sako, Moses Gutu, and many others. Matebeleland North Province has at least 10 active Lacoste foot soldiers, including Clifford Sbanda, Joshua Sbanda, and others. Mashonaland West Province has at least 48 party members working for Mnangagwa, including Phineas Makumbe, James Gumbo, Mike Gawa, and others. Mashonaland East Province has at least 150 party members working with Team Lacoste, including Mabel Chinomona, Daisy Taguma, and others. Blawayo Province has at least 15 individuals linked to the Lacoste movement. They include Judith Nguwe, Eva Bitu, 
Bernard Nata, among others. Mashonaland Central Province has at least 24 party members working as Mnangagwa's foot soldiers, including Martin Dina, who was influential in fabricating the charges against the National Political Commissar, Eric Nyamaharo, Kazembe Kazembe, among many others. Matebeleland South Province has at least seven individuals working to advance VP Mnangagwa's successionist plans. They include Malaika Nkomo, Ernest Ngue, and others. Midlands Province has at least 37 party members working as Mnangagwa's foot soldiers. They include July Moyo, Auxilia Mnangagwa, Douglas Tapuma, and others. Together, these individuals have built a formidable network that operates under the moniker Chunuchedu. The Chunuchedu team is headed by VP Mnangagwa himself, but operationalized by his inner circle and led by his most trusted lieutenant, July Moyo. This inner circle includes Lawrence Mavima, Owen Nguwe, Justice Mayor Wajigajena, John Holder, and others shown on the screen. Removing the Commissar, the Mudenda Report. It is important to begin by pointing out the unimpeachable facts surrounding the Mudenda Report, which is premised on an alleged petition by 4,500 so-called ZANU-PF members and supporters. As the following video shows, the people leading these demonstrations were not ZANU-PF members or were not from Mashonaland Central. Some are expelled members, others belong to ZIM-PF, while others are serving military officers. While the demonstrators purported to be from Ashonland Central, the person leading the protest is Jiga, a well-known youth from Bodirido. The man in the blue t-shirt is Admire from Glenview 3 and is a close friend of expelled renegade Godwin Gomwe. In addition to these demonstrations being led by individuals that are not ZANU-PF members, the so-called petitions fall short of satisfying the conditions for it to be accepted as a bona fide or credible petition. A petition is a legal or quasi-legal document that encapsulates a popular view or position and is intended to inform or cause a decision of a legal or administrative nature to be made. Even though the ZANU-PF constitution does not provide for petitions, it is rational that members should be allowed to express themselves. However, such a petition should be legitimate. The basic and elementary test for any petition includes the following six conditions. Credibility. This so-called petition is clearly not credible because the individuals that championed it were not ZANU-PF members or from Ashonland Central while purporting to be. Independence. The majority of the demonstrators were coerced or misled and, as confirmed by the Mudenda report, the petitioners did not even know what a parallel structure is. Transparency. The process of procuring it must be open. It must be clear who has originated the petition and how it has been distributed. This clearly is not the case. Valid signatures or attestation. There must be a list of signatures from members attesting to the petition. In this case, there was no list of 4,500 signatures. Lawful demands. The demands of the petitioners were manifestly political, free of fraud, malice and other abuses. In this case, the petition is riddled with fraud as the individuals purporting to feather it were not ZANU-PF members or from Ashonland Central while purporting to be. It is clear from the above that the so-called petition that set off the attempt to remove the National Political Commissar did not meet the requirements necessary to be accepted as a petition. In addition to this so-called petition, failing to meet the basic requirements required of a petition, the party structures that purported to receive and endorse the so-called petition did not have the quorum required by the ZANU-PF constitution. It is common cause that the Mashonaland Central Provincial Executive Committee that purported to receive and endorse the so-called petition did not have a quorum. As such, their purported endorsement of the so-called petition was null and void. 
The same is true of the Mashonaland Central Provincial Coordinating Committee that purported to endorse the so-called petition. It also did not have a quorum as required by the ZANU-PF constitution. The Provincial Coordinating Committees from eight other provinces of the party endorsed an inherently flawed petition that came from Mashonaland Central's PEC and PCC that did not have quorums as required by the party's constitution. The question is why sincere committees, knowing fully well they did not have quorum to convene their meetings and endorse a petition that had clear potential to destabilize the party, were in such a desperate hurry, especially in view of the glaring shortcomings of the so-called petition. The answer lies in the pursuit of the now not so hidden agenda by VP Mnangagwa to unconstitutionally topple President Robert Mugabe from the leadership of the party and government. The Mudenda report found that there was no nexus to establish that the National Political Commissar was seeking to overthrow President Mugabe. It thus begs the question, if there was no evidence that the National Political Commissar was seeking to overthrow President Mugabe, what was this drama really about? If a dedicated committee with considerable resources at its disposal was unable to find evidence that the National Political Commissar was working to overthrow President Mugabe, it is clear that the demonstrators that gathered against the National Political Commissar were motivated by a different objective. It was never about the National Political Commissar seeking to overthrow President Mugabe, but about him being seen as an impediment to VP Mnangagwa's successionist scheme. The Blue Ocean Strategy Document The charade and fake petition was part of a well-planned and orchestrated scheme to advance VP Mnangagwa's succession. The objective was to seize control of the party. That scheme is outlined and detailed in a successionist strategy document that was published in 2015 entitled Blue Ocean. The Blue Ocean strategy document was brought to the attention of the Politburo by VP Peleke Zelampoko in October 2016. But unfortunately, the Politburo did not give it the attention that this telling document deserved. One of the reasons why the Politburo did not pay attention to this fundamental and revealing document is because its real authors quickly and loudly denied ownership and alleged it was a document authored by their detractors. Fortunately, since then two things have happened which confirm who the authors of the document are. The first are a series of plans detailed in the document which have come to pass as described in the document. Secondly, VP Mnangagwa and his vocal succession supporters confirmed the document's authorship in a very revealing interview published in January 2017 by an elite and influential British publication, The New Statesman. It is important for the Politburo to have an understanding of the essential features of the Blue Ocean Strategy document. The Blue Ocean Strategy document the Blue Ocean Strategy document says ZANU-PF has three options. Path one, where the party and consequently government must go. Path two, where the president wants the party to go. Path three, the path to self-destruction and oblivion. The Blue Ocean Strategy document is not just about the party. It is about capturing the party and key government institutions. It clearly states on page two that VP Mnangagwa must reclaim control of the party to guide it along path one. The Blue Ocean Strategy document explains that the name Blue Ocean is appropriate because the strategies contained therein are not familiar to most and represent a proactive agenda setting approach. Indeed, the so-called petition against the National Political Commissar is not familiar to ZANU-PF. It is the first of its kind in the history of ZANU-PF. It is a blue ocean strategy. It is proactive, it is unfamiliar, it has no precedence, and it has the shock and awe effect. The systematic capture of state institutions is an unfamiliar strategy. Solomon Mujuru did not do it. Joyce Mujuru did not do it. While she had people who supported her, she did not have institutions. 
This presentation shows that VP Mnangagwa now controls key institutions of the state in line with the Blue Ocean Strategy document and is using them to further his successionist agenda, systematically targeting individuals identified as opponents in the Blue Ocean Strategy document while filling out key positions with his loyalists. The Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. The Blue Ocean Strategy document says that the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission must accumulate dossiers on Dr. Chombo, Professor Moyo, Comrade Kasukwere, and the First Lady. This Blue Ocean Strategy has been implemented with brutal determination. Professor Jonathan Moyo was relentlessly attacked by Zach with a well-known Mnangagwa loyalist, Commissioner Goodson Nguni, willfully misleading the public that Zimde funds did not benefit any political party, despite a clear finding by the Politburo to the contrary. No money from Zimde benefited any political party. It is a lie. All monies that have been paid out have been traced to the personal benefit of Professor Jonathan Moyo, the question is why would Nguni go out of his way to lie in this manner? Whose agenda is he serving? It is an important question. Why is a Zak commissioner lying in this way? Speaking of Zak, the Blue Ocean Strategy document states that critical positions must be secured in these institutions and the personnel must be given strict instructions to hoard incriminating dossiers on the G40 brass and all echelons of the party. The appointment of Commissioner Goodson Guni to the Anti-Corruption Commission is an example of the implementation of this strategy. Goodson Guni is a fugitive from South African justice having fled that country after perpetuating a series of complex frauds. Documents outlining the charges against Goodson Guni have been provided and the relevant sections highlighted. The question is, why was a fugitive from justice appointed to a position requiring the highest levels of probity? Additionally, the acting prosecutor general, Ray Goba, is also an ex-convict, having been convicted of attempting to pervert the course of justice in Namibia. His undeserved elevation to the helm of the National Prosecuting Authority is not by chance. It is a blue ocean strategy to staff key state institutions with individuals that pledge allegiance to VP Mnangagwa. Why else would the Justice Ministry that VP Mnangagwa controls choose to support the appointment of an ex-convict? This does not make sense. Why would the Justice Ministry support the appointment of an ex-convict? Disgraced former Prosecutor General Joannis Tomana, a non Mnangagwa ally working with elements in the military, sought to withdraw charges against individuals that attempted to bomb Gushungo Dairy. This now exposed plot to intimidate the first family and undermine the authority of the police by sponsoring violent bandits was part of a blue ocean strategy to create a series of events that would result in the head of the police, Augustine Chuhuri, who is viewed as an obstacle to Mnangagwa's plans, seeming incompetent. It is also notable that the National Prosecuting Authority employs at least 42 military officers. The Director of Administration is Colonel Solomon Siziba. Major Levi Msipa is the Administration and Finance Executive. Captain Klopas Mapfumo is the Administration Manager. Major Garikai Manyeruke is Human Resources Executive. And Captain Kalisto Chafaza is Human Resources Manager. This arrangement is in blatant violation of the Constitution, but VP Mnangagwa has allowed it as Minister of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs because the arrangement advances his succession scheme. Zim Papers, National Newspapers Captured Just like the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission and the National Prosecuting Authority, Zim Papers has been taken over and continues to systematically vilify individuals identified as opponents in the Blue Ocean Strategy document. Why is Zim Papers obsessed with Comrade Kasukwere? Why is it obsessed with Professor Jonathan Moyo and Comrade Joao, as demonstrated by their relentless attacks on these individuals? 
They are working to further the Blue Ocean Strategy document plan to subject opponents to brutal character assassination. The following recording was taken when Sunday Mail reporter Tinashe Farao, now with National Parks, approached Deputy Minister of Higher and Tertiary Education, Science and Technology Development, Dr. Godfrey Gendawa, seeking to recruit him as an informant against Professor Jonathan Moyo. In this recording, the Sunday Mail journalist openly states that the Sunday Mail is working in conjunction with General Chuenga and George Charamba in the Ministry of Information to further VP Mnangagwa's successionist ambitions. The following pictures show the same journalist with General Chuenga. <laughs> At my level, and it, yeah. you must tell me exactly what is it that you are looking for. True, push under nine. What I have told you, right? Is it a secret? Because you see, if, 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 The phone call to General Chuenga is unsuccessful as his number is unavailable and the call reaches voicemail. Listen carefully to the voicemail number. It is indeed General Chuenga's Econet phone number 0772 104 589. Listen carefully as the number is read out. It is clear that this journalist is indeed working with General Chuenga as he claims. 
around. So, oh yeah. so you know, we're politicians, and the, the truth of the matter is the country is in transition. In transition, it belong in, in transition from, to from, from, to, from, from to the, whose faith? From the Robert Mugabe leadership yeah. to someone else's. Who oh, is that someone else? I in, don't know. In, in it's not, it's not, it's not. Uh, because uh, uh, because uh, uh, we are transi- transiting from the road to Mugabe here and there. We are not going to transit to Chinda. If you are saying I must be part of Komoda who transit to Chinda, you must kill me. <laughs> You must tell me to transit at Chinda Kupi. You want to give me as a source of information, and then you want to tell me, you don't want to tell me, uh, can I be part? If I'm not supposed to be your information, I would be too true transit. I was telling me, would you guy from Mondo? Of course, he was not telling me what was of the right hand. He didn't see me by a command. One was a Pana president. Poti in him, Poti Vamnanga, Poti in him. All right. You may not tell me that's how I want the structure to be. All right. But from the background, they put, you know, I mean, who are these people who are just coming without the feeling that. And the president. That's the structure I command. It's there in the history. Put on Masara, Panam Nanga, Panam, the president, put on Nanga, put it in terms of seniority. All right. Iran Masara, but put it on Dara. This Sunday again. Yeah, the general was saying. Yeah, 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 general. Eh, was the interview just a little bit. All right, yeah. It's in pieces. And you were saying. All over the world, Masoj mm. they involved in the running of the country. Mm. In some countries, they actually sit in cabinet. Mm. Our constituent says we must we have a national security council which is chaired by the president. Mm. And I sit in that national security council. Mm. I get my briefing direct from the president. So when people say, you know, you are trying to say, but why would people say I'm interfering in politics? Yet the military all over the world, they are actively involved in how things are done, in how to run a country, in economy, politics. You can't run a country that's not a blessing, is it? It's like a transition in government. The president is 92 years old. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to I mean, politics, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So that when I get into it, I don't know. 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 That's why all this fight. It's because we are in transition. The transition might be painful, mm-hmm. but it's happening. It might be long, but it's happening. No two ways about it. All right. It's known, isn't it? It's written all over. We are in transition. It's written all over. It's written all over. It's written all over. That's what they are saying. The country is in transition. Unless you want to think that always. We are in transition, total transition, from the Robert Mugabe era to someone else. Which someone else you have two candidates? I've read who's the other candidate. Uh, and two are what you other general Aku Zaban Mavi. I can't see. I don't do one. I can't see you. Structure of Sangan, Sara, senior members of the command, president. And it's Poeta as president. Poeta in Poeta. You as you as a journalist, when a person gives you a hierarchy of command and then they tell you, Kuti, so we, we, are, we are in transition. In fact, in other words, you saying this number two is next in line. It might not. Mm, mm, number two is next in line. I thought you had a better guy. Because what only you thought you had. As soon as you could do and do talk about it, we have our president, we have our vice president, we have our command expense forces, we have no way of our issue, and everyone else. Okay. That's the line. In his own, my, my assessment, his conviction is good. I think it's only fair for this one to take off. All right. Saka, Saka, now Professor Vaita say Vaita impediment to. It's not like it. I don't know. Mm. But you know, I don't know how people operate. Mm. But, 
A journalist working for a national newspaper openly seeking to recruit a senior government official to a successionist cause. Zim Papers is now engaged in relentless open warfare against those identified as opponents in the Blue Ocean Strategy document. It is now a captured institution and is clearly working to further VP Mnangagwa's successionist objectives. The party cannot afford to ignore this capture of state institutions, a strategy that is clearly detailed in the Blue Ocean Strategy document. On April 4, 2015, George Charamba, writing under the pen name Nathaniel Maneru, wrote, In the case of Robert Mugabe, it is a matter of duty. Soon he will bow out like all mortals. He can't leave a dispute in the party, a dispute still unresolved, and what is worse, one with real potential for gunpowder. Historically, pushes in Zanu PF have always been a bloody affair. Thank God this one happened in the life of the Commander-in-Chief of Politics and for me, the man has discharged a key assignment to do with succession. These are Charamba's own words in which he says President Mugabe is bowing out soon in that the succession issue has been settled in favor of Munangagwa. It is clear that the Permanent Secretary in the Minister of Information has been captured and is now a key cog in Munangagwa's successionist power grab. On the 6th of June 2015, Charamba again writing under the pen name Nathaniel Maneru wrote, In the twilight of President Mugabe's leadership, we badly need a frank debate on leadership. I am ready to lead the charge right away, from as early as next week, or else I quit. In addition to Zim papers, the private media has also been infiltrated in line with the Blue Ocean Strategy document. VP Munangagwa confirmed this infiltration when he disclosed during a Central Committee meeting in 2015 that he had a source inside the Daily News that revealed to him high-level sources to that newspaper. The journalist he identified, Guthrie Munyuki, was quickly suspended by Associated Newspaper Zimbabwe. However, Munyuki recently bounced back as deputy editor of the Daily News. This promotion to deputy editor, after being identified as a mole, leaking confidential sources to VP Mnangagwa is extraordinary. It has happened only because the daily news is now totally controlled by Team Lacoste. The promotion is an expression of gratitude by Team Lacoste and is designed to ensure that Gathri Minyuki continues to do Mnangagwa's bidding at the daily news. It is worth noting that the elevation of Munyuki coincided with an aggressive pro Mnangagwa editorial line in the Daily News. Consider the following headlines by the Daily News.
It is clear that the daily news has now been taken over. Remember, the Blue Ocean Strategy document says ZANU-PF has three options. Option one, where the party and consequently government must go. Option two, where the president wants the party to go. Option three, the path to self-destruction and oblivion. The Blue Ocean Strategy document is not just about the party. It is about capturing the party and key government institutions. It clearly states on page 2 that VP Mnangagwa must reclaim control of the party to guide it along path 1. When a journalist from a national newspaper approaches a deputy minister and freely states that they are working for Mnangagwa, that cannot be taken lightly. Even Mujuru never went this far. One of the key strategies of the Blue Ocean Strategy document is to maintain plausible deniability for VP Mnangagwa. The document states that, to maintain plausible deniability of anything, access to VP Mnangagwa must be very limited. Energy Mutodi openly called for President Mugabe to President step Mugabe down. Is now in his advanced age and he needs to retire and pave way for a successor. And that's exactly the feeling of uh, every patriotic Zimbabwean that day. We have got no jobs, we have got no, uh, we can't even afford to bury themselves, we can't even afford to send their children to school. Zanbi's members, a, 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 quite a big chunk, are saying that he must be, he must uh, st 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 step down, he must leave office and uh, allow uh, for a primary election in the party that could see uh, his deputy Emerson Nagaba taking over. The same Mutodi is then seen enjoying whiskey with the vice president at his private residence, together with Zanu PF renegades, suspended and expelled party members, such as Ziambi Ziambi, Ezra Chizamire, and Vengai Musengi. It cannot be accepted that this is a coincidence. It is not a coincidence. In these pictures, Energy Mutodi is seen with top Lacoste foot soldiers, Martin Dina, Victor Matemadanda, and Christopher Mtrangwa. These renegades speak in Mnangagwa's favor because they are in fact his foot soldiers while he conveniently pleads innocence. Pursuant to this blue ocean strategy, the first lady was repeatedly insulted by youths loyal to Mnangagwa. You can be president. Tell us. Besides Guamka Zum Tunga Mitimuja Makaita, in the history of Patna Nika, Kimborichi, what we know, some of us is you are a hired spoiler. But I don't doubt in the Tower of Kamurina, the Jaguti, touch not the successor. She must be a queen of beef, Taura in Yambut English. But touch not the successor. But if you think you can sustain the game, then move to your next rally. My advice to you, Mama, is sit down and relax. Some close to you in your social life, including your very own wife, Dr. Grace Mugabe, and your so-called allies in the party and some in government, seem to have a an evil plan to destroy the party which we have so much nature and protected and they are committed to see that this project succeeds. You were in China, Tiapona, and I hope you had you may yet find time to say you may yet find time to learn about what happened to Chairman Mao's legacy, which almost went to nothing because of his second and younger wife, who then worked in collaboration with the gang of four like Ma, Dr. Mama is doing with the Generation 40. She may at some point miss home, as she might end up somewhere in Dubai, as her influence authority and authority is short-lived. Advise Dr. Mama to sober up and calm down. Vice President Mpoko saw sponsored protests targeting him during his stay at Rainbow Towers. While Mnangagwa loyalists, Victor Matemadanda and Energy Mutodi encouraged these acts of lawlessness. And you don't expect the person to be the edge of Vice President Mpoko without a home? Okay. So people, yes, people want him to go to his home. 
the vice president uh, Pelegesrambogo uh, extended the hotel stay. Uh, I've heard some people have gone to the hotel to demonstrate. Uh, I've also written articles to try to discourage him from continuing uh, to stay in the hotel. In line with the plausible deniability strategy, VP Munangagwa publicly denounces his eager foot soldiers, but they continue to work in his interests, advancing his successionist cause. <laughs> Something is clearly not right. Why would any individual that has been denounced like Christopher Mtrangwa continue to work for a principle that has rejected him? It does not make any sense. It is clear to all rational minds that these denunciations are not sincere, but merely lip service to shield VP Mnangagwa. He is trying to be clever, but his successionist maneuvers are now too obvious to be ignored or taken lightly. VP Munangagwa's successionist capture of state institutions now extends to staff in the office of the President and Cabinet and the Justice Ministry. This brazen capture was used to quietly retire the late Chief Justice Godfrey Chijigao Siku. After the President instructed Chijigao Siku to return to work, VP Munangagwa began a spirited campaign to undermine the legitimate process of electing the new Chief Justice by sponsoring a spurious lawsuit by Robio Zabani and using Justice Hungwe to make an outrageous judgment that sought to suspend a constitutional provision. VP Munangagwa, having sponsored Zabani, went on to accuse Chijigao Siku of violating the constitution all in a bid to support Zabani's baseless appeal. This attempt to install a Chief Justice loyal to VP Mnangagwa by unconstitutionally eliminating the public interview process is yet another example of the Blue Ocean Strategy document in action. The effort was daring, unprecedented, and therefore unfamiliar. Then there are the dirty going-ons at the National Prosecuting Authority. The following documents show internal minutes from the National Prosecuting Authority in which the board raises complaints over unconstitutional interference by the Ministry of Justice in which the NPA was required to provide information on high-profile prosecution cases, thereby undermining the independence of the National Prosecuting Authority. Controlling the National Prosecuting Authority on February 1, 2017, the National Director of Public Prosecutions wrote to the Acting Prosecutor General, Ray Gola, after attending a Heads of Departments meeting chaired by VP Mnangagwa at the Justice Ministry. Paragraph 2 of the memo says, The meeting has insisted that the NPA include in its report all high-profile cases and the stage each case has reached. It is the meeting's view that the NPA's contribution to the meeting without reporting on progress is not good enough. To require the NPA to report details of prosecutions to the Justice Ministry is unconstitutional and illegal. Very illegal. It is a blue ocean strategy. That memo was pursuant to an earlier concern expressed by the NPA on the 26th of October 2016 where it was recorded in minute number nine, headed Ministry of Justice Meetings of Heads of Department. The concern was that the meeting often placed NPA representatives in a position where they were called upon to divulge sensitive NPA cases for open discussion, adversely affecting NPA independence. But why should the Blue Ocean Strategy document be taken seriously? For two reasons. The first is a series of developments that have happened that are consistent with the strategies outlined in the document. Simply put, the things Blue Ocean set out to do have been done as outlined in the document. 
This is very serious, and it's a matter the party cannot afford to ignore. Indeed, it is also a matter that law enforcement authorities cannot ignore. The second reason is the interview given by VP Munangagwa to British magazine New Statesman, which led to the publication of an article titled The Last Days of Robert Mugabe in January 2017. In this interview and the subsequent article whose contents have not been challenged, it is clear that the Blue Ocean Strategy document was authored by VP Mnangagwa and his foot soldiers. There are seven notable points that must be highlighted from the New Statesman interview. 1. In the first paragraph, Mr. Martin Fletcher, a well-known British foreign correspondent with ties to British intelligence, says that he entered the country under false pretenses and that he did not have the accreditation required to operate as a journalist in accordance with Zimbabwean law. He also says the interview had been arranged through unofficial back channels. This raises a number of troubling questions. Why would the whole vice president arrange an interview with a British foreign correspondent with ties to British intelligence for an elite British publication using unofficial back channels? Why would VP Munangagwa, who is also the Minister of Justice, agree to be interviewed by a British journalist with ties to British intelligence operating outside the laws of Zimbabwe? Why? Not only so, this interview then leads up to an article titled The Last Days of Robert Mugabe. 2. It is worth noting that before meeting with VP Munangagwa, the new statesman journalist says that he met with Christopher Mutrangwa, who told him that he was 100% sure Munangagwa would be Zimbabwe's next president. Notice that while VP Munangagwa was publicly distancing himself from foot soldiers like Mutrangwa, in private, they were in fact privately colluding and meeting with this new statesman journalist discussing VP Munangagwa's succession scheme. It is clear that VP Munangagwa and Christopher Mutrangwa are working hand in glove. It is also clear to all rational minds that Martin Fletcher came to Zimbabwe at the invitation of VP Munangagwa and his close associates and that the resultant article, The Last Days of Robert Mugabe, was based on statements made by VP Munangagwa and his associates. 3. Mutrangwa told the New Statesman journalist that he was 100% certain Munangagwa would be Zimbabwe's next president because he is part of the Lacoste ground team and he is working energetically toward that outcome. Martin Fletcher confirms that he got a secret nine-page document passed by an unnamed reliable source which shows the implementation of this silent campaign to elevate Munangagwa to the presidency. He confirms that he got the document from someone in the Munangagwa camp. That document is the nine-page Blue Ocean Strategy document. There is no reason to disbelieve Fletcher because his words are coming from someone who was invited by Munangagwa's camp. 4. During the interview with VP Munangagwa, Martin Fletcher raised the issue of Gukurahundi. VP Mnangagwa responded in a manner that betrayed his lack of loyalty and lack of collective responsibility. He said he was not responsible for Gukurahundi because at the time Zimbabwe had a president, pointing to President Mugabe, the then Prime Minister, a Minister of Defense, pointing to Dr. Sekramai, and a Commander of the Army, pointing to the late General Solomon Mojuru. I was none of that, he concluded. This statement seeking to place blame at the feet of President Mugabe is shocking, especially coming from VP Mnangagwa of all people. 5. Martin Fletcher says the nine-page document he received from the Mnangagwa camp claims that President Mugabe himself created G40 because, behind the president's feigned love for his deputy, he has always felt threatened by VP Mnangagwa and the prospect of his presidency being outshined by that of his protégé. The document being referred to in 2017 is clearly the 2015 Blue Ocean document because the 2015 document states the same thing. It says, However, 
The real force behind the G40 is President Mugabe, who has always felt threatened by VP Mnangagwa and the prospect of his presidency being outshined by that of his protégé. It is clear that this verbatim quote by Fletcher is coming from the Blue Ocean Strategy document. Six, to make it clear that he is talking about the Blue Ocean document, Fletcher refers to the nine-page document. Indeed, Blue Ocean has nine pages. Seven, it is significant that Fletcher says Mnangagwa proved courteous enough as they sat down to do the interview because it was not in his interest to be hostile, not at this time. What time is he referring to? He goes on to say, Munangagwa is determined to succeed Mugabe and he will need Western support. It is because of this need for Western support that Munangagwa arranged this interview with an influential British magazine through a British foreign correspondent with links to MI6. The interview was done to reinforce the Blue Ocean document. Remember, the Blue Ocean strategy document says ZANU PF has three options. Option one, where the party and consequently government must go. Option two, where the president wants the party to go. Option three, the path to self-destruction and oblivion. The Blue Ocean Strategy document is not just about the party. It is about capturing the party and government. It clearly states on page two that VP Mnangagwa must reclaim control of the party to guide it along path one. Mnangagwa's loyalists in action. Energy Mutodi has openly and on many occasions called for President Mugabe to step down. How does an appointed vice president entertain such people at his private residence together with ZANU-PF renegades and expelled party members such as Ziambi Ziambi, Ezra Chadzimire and Vengai Musengi? It cannot be accepted that this is a coincidence. It is not a coincidence. These renegades speak in Mnangagwa's favor because they are in fact his foot soldiers while he conveniently pleads innocence. But now the plot is out in the open for all to see. It can no longer be hidden. It can no longer be ignored. Pursuant to this Blue Ocean strategy, the First Lady has been repeatedly insulted by youths loyal to Mnangagwa. It is my view that Mr. Mugabe has long been incapacitated and no longer fit to lead Zimbabwe. His personal admission at the 2014 PF Congress that he now gets bullied by his wife and another public admission by him in Gutu that he can no longer command his wife to prepare good food for him are all a clear testimony of his incapacity to lead. The following picture of these expelled youths, Norest Makururu, the notorious Godwin Gomwe, Ratizo Mkarati, Godfrey Senengamu, and Mike Nyamtaka was taken at the burial of General Chuwenga's uncle, Francis Manyoa, in January 2016. As you can see, they are proudly wearing Lacoste t-shirts in an effort to send a clear message that there is a new sheriff in town. Why are these youths so zealous about VP Mnangagwa? Why are they not zealous about Dr. Chombo, about Comrade Kasukwere or Comrade Sekramai? Why are they so vicious in their attacks against anyone perceived to be a threat to VP Mnangagwa's succession scheme? Meanwhile, rogue war veterans aligned to VP Mnangagwa have threatened violence if Mnangagwa does not succeed President Mugabe. <laughs> Victor Matemadanda was quoted in the press as saying such an outcome would lead to bloodshed. As in 2004, when renegades like Jonathan Moyo and others were employed by Mnangagwa as his foot soldier, so Mutangwa and others are working toward a similar course today. 
ati bisa kuli chipita tashika pano amufungiwa ere kuti baabuda Joshua kuti tipinde mukena Zanipe solution to the economy is for the president to step down and Nangabo who's most senior to take over they can use that from a constitutional point of view. They, they can use their constitution to, to get rid of Robert Mugabe and put in Nangagwa, who is certainly likely to take over anyway. And make him see reason in resigning while there are still some few who can respect him and hold him high dearly. For there shall be none soon. He has passed his best before death and he has played it wrong this time as he faces an embarrassment in the coming polls. There has never been a time when forces have converged at the same point like now. We are uniting to say enough is enough. Bona, dead is fast turning into a zero from a hero. And he may find it very difficult to secure a place at our national shrine. Secretly protecting white farmers. One of VP Mnangagwa's most powerful weapons of deception is maintaining an acceptable public position on issues while holding entirely divergent views privately and privately working to support those divergent views. His protection of white farmers illustrates this duplicitly perfectly. In January 2016, the British Telegraph reproduced comments made by VP Mnangagwa while addressing white farmers at the funeral of Neville Kotsi. Mnangagwa is reported to have said, I have kept this a secret, but let me tell you now. The majority of you who are still here are here because of Neville and his wife. Every morning they would be at my house bothering me left and right to protect you. If you did not know it, it is because of the good nature of the Kusi family, who I have worked very well with over the past 40 years, that you are still here. These are Munangagwa's own words. While publicly pretending to be a champion of land reform and a protector of the revolution, he privately tells this white audience that he was in fact protecting white farmers. This is why Western capitals are so eager to assist VP Mnangagwa and are trying to help him take over. He is a man driven by expediency, not principle. This is why he has strong relationships with Colonel Dye, John Bredenkamp and Billy Rottenback. It is important to remember that on the 15th of July 2003, Morgan Changirai issued a statement stating that Colonel Dyke had been sent to him by Mnangagwa and General Jnashe. Dyke had earlier on confirmed this on the 19th of December 2002 to the Daily News with the message to the effect that President Mugabe wanted to retire. While this message was being sent to Trangirai, Jnawashi had been reportedly sent to President Mugabe by Mnangagwa to ask him when he would step down. There is no record of VP Mnangagwa ever denying these reports. This is the company that Mnangagwa keeps. Birds of a feather flock together. For a long time, VP Munangagwa has avoided detection by using people like Jnawashi to do his dirty work. People like Jonathan Moyo to do his dirty work in 2004 through Cholocho. People like Mutrangwa and Matema Danda to do his dirty work. Even now, he continues to hide behind his foot soldiers. But it is now as clear as day that VP Munangagwa is the successionist puppet master. True Corruption while Mnangagwa has been working with Zak to engineer corruption allegations against those who oppose his ascension to the throne, his own past is riddled with staggering cases of corruption in which he defrauded ZANU-PF companies. Consider the following examples in which Mnangagwa withdrew funds from ZANU-PF companies and deposited them into his personal account for personal use. These transactions can be verified by the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. On the 9th of October 2003, Munangagwa withdrew a check of 2.3 million from AM Trigger's account at National Discount House. He deposited this into his personal Joe Bank account number 012-111-0509-501 for his personal use. Check number 66485 is relevant. 
On the 16th of October 2003, Munangagwa withdrew 1.7 million from AM Trega through National Discount House, which he again deposited into his personal account number 012-111-0509-501 on the 20th of October 2003. He converted these funds to his personal use. National Discount House check number 67388 is pertinent. On the 24th of October 2003, Munangagwa withdrew a check through National Discount House on AM Trigger's account with an amount of $1 million and gave it to Mnene Mission Hospital. National Discount House check number 68160 refers. On the 24th of October 2003, Munangagwa withdrew from AM Trega $2 million on National Discount House check number 68158, which he deposited into his personal account number 2002008 with First Banking Corporation and converted the money to his own use. On the 31st of October 2003, Munangakwa's account number 012110509501 with Jewel Bank was credited with $54 million, being a check deposit drawn on National Discount House from the AM Trega account in favor of Clonsilla Service Station, Gweru, owned by Mrs. Aleta Maboza. This money was given as a gift by Munangagwa. On the 10th of December 2003, Munangapa withdrew a check of 10 million from AM Trigger's account at National Discount House. He deposited the money into his personal account 012-111-05-09-501 with Jewel Bank Kwame Nkrumah branch. Check number 74038 refers. These ZANU-PF companies were at all times being represented by Munangagwa as the board chairman. With the collusion of J.C. Joshi and D.C. Panjga, they masterminded a series of sophisticated frauds that diverted to their personal use money that was meant for ZANU-PF as dividends. J.C. Joshi and D.C. Panjga have since fled the country. The Great Chrome Deception What can we say of a VP? who abuses his position of authority and power to enrich himself and his cronies through deception. VP Munangagwa proposed to government a project to process chrome ore instead of exporting it raw. This was after government had suspended chrome ore exports on the basis that chrome ore was being exported at low cost and with very little benefits accruing to government and the people of Zimbabwe. VP Munangagwa presented a deceptive proposal to government that would see African chrome fields being granted mining rights to mine and process chrome. The proposal was approved because VP Munangagwa misled government into believing that the Indian investor had the latest technology that would process chrome ore into ferrochrome. It was on the promise that the Indians would add value that vast mining assets were granted to the Indian investor. However, in spite of President Mugabe being invited to commission the plant where he was shown the alleged chrome ore processing technologies, the Indians have not processed any chrome ore in Zimbabwe as promised by VP Mnangagwa. Truckloads of chrome ore continue to leave the country and the Indians have earned over 49 million United States dollars over the last year through this pillage. This would not have been possible without the cunning deception of VP Munangagwa, who willfully misled government. If VP Munangagwa was not working in cahoots with the Indians, why has he not followed up on a project he championed and demanded the Indians meet their end of the deal and provide the technology they promised? The African Chrome Fields corruption scandal does not end with misleading government. The Minister of Finance, which has also been captured by VP Mnangagwa, went on to instruct CMED to facilitate duty-free importation of fuel for African chrome fields. As of December 2016, over a million liters of diesel had been cleared duty-free. On screen is the CMED letter confirming this duty-free facility for Africa chrome fields. It is clear to all rational minds that this deal stinks and VP Mnangagwa's hands are all over it.
After misleading government into handing over vast chrome assets to Indian conmen, VP Mnangagwa now travels in a private jet owned by Zunaid Moti, the Indian businessman that owns African chrome fields. It is clear to all rational minds that VP Mnangagwa was not misled by the Indians, but that he misled government in cahoots with Zunaid Moti, who is now expressing his gratitude by extending use of his private jet to VP Mnangagwa. The Feared Godfather Emerson Mnangagwa is feared and loathed in the Midlands, where his supporters have unleashed a reign of terror on opponents. Police have handled 12 murders linked to the Lacoste terror group known as Al-Shabaab and commanded by ZANU-PF MP Owen Nguwe. Mike Hughes, who faces a murder charge in Shurugwi, is allegedly being harbored by Mnangagwa and the police are not able to get to him. VP Mnangagwa has been linked to the attack on then-media personality Godfrey Majonga, who was caught up in a love triangle allegedly involving VP Mnangagwa. VP Mnangagwa and his security are widely believed to have forced Majonga to jump from the second or third floor of a building, which resulted in him sustaining serious injuries that rendered him paralyzed. Majonga has not lodged a police report out of fear of VP Mnangagwa, but the public continues to whisper and expects that even after so many years, justice must be done or must be seen to be done. Nobody is above the law. Comrades, ZANU-PF is a party that endears itself to the nation through people-centric policies. It is not a party of fear. It is not a party of whispers. It is not a party of intimidation. A person that is known for threats, a person that is known for intimidation, and for allegedly enforcing an innocent man, Godfrey Majonga, to choose between sitting on a hot stove or jumping from the third floor of a building, does not represent the nature and character of our party, ZANU-PF. Remember that the Blue Ocean Strategy document seeks to create an environment in which VP Mnangagwa takes over the party and government. This is what the Mashonaland Central Petition and its controversial endorsement by eight provinces is all about. It is the implementation of the Blue Ocean Strategy document to advance VP Mnangagwa's succession scheme. It is a Blue Ocean move designed to spread into other provinces, just like what happened with the Mashonaland Central Petition. It is now necessary for the party to deal with the Blue Ocean Strategy document and all its manifestations and consequences that are there for all to see.